Today we are going to, it's not going to be a long class and we're going to just study some basic things that will help you a lot in your trading. Okay, just, just basic things, but they're going to help you a lot in your trading. And then our next class tomorrow, that's when we're going to really start, we're really going to go deeper into technical analysis. Remember, we started uh, the basics of technical analysis yesterday and we're like trying to study how candlesticks form and so on. So today we are going to we are going to study uh let me let me just type that. I'm going to study candlesticks. Okay. Types of candlesticks. So today we are going to study types of candlesticks. And we are, and uh, there are so many types of candlesticks, but we are going to focus only on three. Okay. We're going to focus only on three types. And the three types we have, uh, we have a bullish, bullish engulfing. Then we have um, two. We have um, a hammer, and then three, we have a doji. Doji. This one is bullish stroke, bearish. So this these are the type of candlesticks that we're going to study today. Okay, <clears throat> these candlesticks they are very very important. Okay, they will help you a lot in your technical analysis. Remember, I said tomorrow that we are going to go deeper. But first, you need to know these basic types of candlesticks before we you before you start going in deep to analysis because they are going to help you to be able to make good choices when you are trading first and foremost like i said yesterday when you are looking at candlesticks when you are looking at candlesticks you are looking at them to read a story okay they are telling you a story and so you need to be able to read that particular candlestick very well okay you need to be able to read that particular candlestick very well if not you will not be able to understand the story the candle is telling you Okay, let me increase that a little bit again. <clears throat> so if you don't understand the story behind each candle, you will not be able to know whether uh, are you supposed to be buying or you are supposed to be selling. So it's very, very important. And I've summarized them just to these three parts. This, please uh, talk, contraction candle too. Okay. Okay, so I've summarized them to just these three types of candles. Okay, just these three types. And with these three types of candlesticks, at least any other one, there are so many, like I said, but these are the most important ones that you put into your technical analysis so that it doesn't be like you need to cram candles up and down. These are the most important ones and the most, the, 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 the most important ones that I use personally. So I'm going to be explaining them how you can trade them and so on. When, when you are trading, how you can implement them into your trading. So the first one we are going to start with is called a bullish stroke bearish engulfing. Bullish stroke bearish engulfing. When I say bullish here, I mean prices is going up, right? So we are talking about a bullish means price is a, it's a bullish candle or a buying candle. And when I'm talking about a bearish here, we are talking about a red candle or a bear, uh, a down candle, a down close candle, as we discussed yesterday. So, what is a bullish engulfing and what is a bearish engulfing candle? That's what we're going to study now. And so, I'm going to be drawing. I'm first of all going to draw that. I'll first of all illustrate it before we we'll go now to the chart to try to look for the examples. So now, with a bullish, uh, a bullish engulfing, let's start with a bullish engulfing candle. This is uh, a formation of two candles, okay? 
A bullish and a bearish candle, they are formation of two candles. For a bullish candle, you need first a bearish candle. And as we said, a bearish candle, let's put it to be red. So you need a bearish candle like this one. Let's read. So first of all, we need a bearish candle. We need a bearish candle that looks like this. And now we need a bullish candle next to it. Now, if this is a bearish candle, where will the close be? It should be right down here. So this should be the close of the candle at this point because the open should be up if it is a bearish candle. Now, the next one that we need here, the bullish candle will open. The next candle opens here and then it trades up like this. Now, this one here now is a bullish candle. Okay, it's a bullish candle. No, it's not a bearish candle again. So let's choose um, let's choose this color. Okay, so this is a bearish, a bullish candle now. Okay, so this formation here is called a bullish engulfing. This is a bullish engulfing candle. This particular one here. This one alone is called a bullish engulfing candle, but it is, uh, it is a bullish engulfing candle because of this particular candle because it engulfs this candle. That's simply the meaning behind it. Okay, it engulfs this candle. That means it opens the, it trades above and it closes above this particular candle on the bearish or the the bearish candle. So it's a bullish engulfing. It engulfs all the body of this candle. Now, what does this imply? This means that if we have a bearish candle, which means that sellers were in the market, which means sellers were in the market, and now the sellers lost their strength, right? Which means or sellers were not able again to, they did not have, they, they were not willing again to continue selling. So the buyers came in and then they pushed price right up to, Closing above the upper the, the high of this uh, bearish candle. So sellers were present in the market, but what happened? They failed to push prices further down, and buyers came in. They bought everything. So which means that around this point, like I explained yesterday, the demand that came in was more than the supply, right? And then which it had not it had to push prices up to engulf the whole body of this candle. So what this means is this is a signal or this is uh this this is a signal that the demand is high and prices will likely continue to go up. Okay? It signifies uh weakness for that is it signifies uh less supply, okay? And then a high demand so which means the demand is high and we'll likely see higher prices okay now let's do this for a bearish engulfing it's simply just the opposite and remember as i said it is a combination of two candles a single candle like this is not just a bullish engulfing candle it is a bullish engulfing candle because it it is it engulfs the whole body of the previous candle Okay, it engulfs the whole body of the previous candle and it closes above it. Well, there are some times that you will see a bullish engulfing that is somewhere around here, which means it will trade above the previous candle, but it comes back down to close around the body of this candle. This as well is also a bullish engulfing candle, but it's not a strong indication. This shows that the buyers, the, the demand that is coming in is not that strong as to compare to a candle that will close above the high of this one. Okay, that's just the two differences. There's sometimes that you see a candle like this as well. Okay, this is still engulfed. It has still engulfed this candle, but when it closes right down at this point, it shows that the demand is not that strong to, that is the demand was not that strong, okay, to push prices up. But it's still an engulfing candle. So the signal here is not that strong enough. It's not really that strong. But once you have a signal like this, it engulfs all the body of this candle. It's a sign that the demand that is coming in is really that much. Okay. And prices will likely continue higher. So let's uh, look at it from um, 
a bearish uh, a bearish engulfing. Let's look at a bearish engulfing right now. We're going to have something like this. Okay. We have something like this for a bearish engulfing candle. This is a bearish engulfing. Bearish engulfing. is a bearish engulfing and then this is bullish engulfing candle so this is a bullish engulfing candle and this is a bearish engulfing candle okay this one here is a bearish engulfing candle and then this is a bullish now this is simply just the opposite explanation it means that prices was actually going up we're having bullish price price was pushing up like we are maybe we could be having like uh let's do this we might have been having like something like this the same thing here we should be having something like this that means price was dropping down Okay, we're having something like that. Okay, so this is how it is, very clear now, okay. So we're having a uh, price was pushing up, pushing up, and then out of a sudden, a candle opened, traded up, created a high like this, higher than this one, and then again dropped down to create a low, and then it closed below the low of this candle. This is the low of this candle. Remember, this is this is the open and this is the close. This is the high. So this candle, bearish candle, closed below the low of this candle. This now is a bearish engulfing candle. And what it signifies is that there is a likelihood of price coming, uh, continuing to drop down because this uh, shows that uh, supply is greater than the demand. Okay, so we are going to likely see something like this. We are going to likely see uh, something like this. Okay, this is what will likely happen. So what is happening like this is like a reversal. When prices were going up, when when the demand was high, and then it reached, it reached at this point, supply became higher than the demand, and then prices started to drop. So how do we, this is the, the reading behind this candlestick. It tells us when supply or demand is higher. Okay, like when price is going up, this means that, this uh, engulfing candle is formed of OB, sorry to rush. We'll, we'll talk about that. We are not talking about other blocks yet. Okay. We're talking about candlesticks. So, like I said here, <clears throat> when prices was rallying up, this means that supply here was actually greater than the demand. Okay. Buy orders were more than sell orders. Now, I'm giving this explanation so that you will get to understand it much better. Okay. So, when it started, when we saw this particular candle, this means that this, so the demand that was here has reduced. And now the supply is coming in more than the demand. Okay. So which signifies, that is, is a signal that we're going to be expecting bearish, uh, a bearish move. And what that happens now is that we'll start selling from here. Okay. When this candle closes, we'll now start selling. We'll start selling now to continue the downtrend, to continue the down move. Okay, it's the same thing here with this. If we're in a down move and then out of a sudden we saw this bullish candle, this signifies that the, the supply that was here, that which was this much, has reduced and demand now is more than supply. So it's a signal that we can start to see bullish price movements.
okay, we'll start to see price shooting up. It is very simple. It is very simple. It's not complicated. Okay, it's not complicated. So when you look at a chart, you'll see all these patterns formed all over the place. This and then this. So that's simply uh, the explanations or the, the meaning behind these candlesticks. Remember I said all these candlesticks that you're seeing in the market, they are, are telling us a story. They're giving us a reading. It's like uh, the people who are doing geography, you, you, if you want to study a country, you, you are looking at lines in a book, okay? You're trying to look at lines in a book and then you the, the lines, they are telling you a story or they are, they are giving you they are giving they are giving you um a story behind a particular country and so on. So looking at candlesticks, they are giving us a story behind what is happening in the market. Okay, it is inside these candles that we are reading to understand what is going on behind the scenes. What are the buyers doing? What are the sellers doing? If not, if you are not able to read these candlesticks when price is going up like this and you see this candle form, you will not be able to understand that buyers are coming uh, sellers are coming into the market to start selling so you will not be able to understand that and you'll be caught up because you feel like price wants to continue going and it will go right to heaven no when you are able to read this candlestick, you will know that okay the buying pressure has ended and now we are having sell pressure and you start to sell that's simply how it is okay with bullish and bearish engulfing Okay, that's simply how this bullish and bearish engulfing works. Okay, if you have a question about bullish and bearish engulfing, you can let the you can write them on the chat box. But remember, I said it must not necessarily close above the previous candle. But if it does, that is a that is a a big signal. That is a very strong bullish engulfing candle. But a weak engulfing candle is one that closes inside the body of the previous candle, which means that there's a likelihood that price might still go up, but it will not be going up with that, with uh, much power, okay? It will not be going up with much power. So that's simply the explanation behind an engulfing candle and a bearish, a bullish and a bearish engulfing candle, okay? Uh, let me just look for a quick example and I will show you guys. Um, I want to look for a quick example. Okay. Let's look at this one. Let's look at this point here. <clears throat> so you will see that this particular candle here, it took out the low of this previous candle, the red candle. It took the high again and then it closed above. So what happened now is price continued to rally right up. Okay, we continue to rally right up. So that's a signal. This here is a bullish engulfing candle. And what happened next? The movement started pushing back up. Okay, now somebody will say, okay, this one, this long bearish candle, it's not a bearish engulfing. It did not take the high of this candle. So it's not a bearish engulfing candle. Okay, so that's just a quick example that I said that I have, I have seen. Uh, let's see. I want to see another one again. Now, this is another example here. This is another quick example. This one, it took the high of this candle, took the low of this candle. And what happened? It closed below the low of the candle. What happened? Price continued to rally right down. Okay. Price continued to rally right down. So that's how you read. Uh, that's how you read bullish and bearish and going candle now it's not everywhere that you you go to the market you see a bullish and going candle and you want to trade off of we are going to go deep to that 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 will be when we are getting into what we call other blocks and so on okay it's not everywhere on the chart that you want to see a bullish and going candle where you want to see a bullish and going candle is at a swing point like you should see something like this okay these are the areas that you want to see uh, a bullish engulfing. I mean, a bearish engulfing. You want to see a bearish engulfing at this swing high 
and you want to see a bear, a bullish engulfing here, a bullish engulfing here, and somewhere a bearish engulfing here. That's where you see it. You will not likely want to see it here, but if you see it, it's a continuation. That means price will likely continue to go up. But if you see it here, it's a strong signal that price wants to reverse. And if you see it here, it's a strong signal that price wants to go back up. And what that means is you want to start to buy. Okay. So those are the uh I'm 30 minutes late because of the okay. Okay, clear my drawings. New participants and what okay. So that's the explanation behind a bullish and a bearish engulfing candle. So let's go now to the next one. I said I didn't want I don't want to make this class a long one. Okay, so we have explained bearish and a bullish engulfing candle. Uh, okay, please, if you are not getting me, check your mic or your speaker should be having a problem. Now, the next one is a hammer. Okay, the next one is a hammer. If you have carpenters here, they will be very happy. Okay, so let's try to see this one. The, the, the theory behind this one, we call it a hammer. We have two types of hammers. We have... uh. We have a, a bullish, that is, we have a hammer, and then we have an uh, inverted hammer. An inverted hammer. We have an inverted hammer. Let me put that on there. Okay. So we have bullish and bearish and golden candle. We have a hammer stroke and an, uh, an inverted hammer. So we're going to do it with a bullish and the bearish. bullish and uh, hammer and a bearish hammer as well so let's do this okay something like this so this is what we have Remember I said red here stands for bearish, okay? And then this stands for bullish, okay? So this is a good hammer. This is a good hammer here. All these are hammers. But we have uh, the inverted hammer. The inverted hammer is like this. It's like this. Okay, these are inverted hammers and this is a hammer. This is inverted, it's like upside down. Okay, that's why it's inverted. An inverted hammer, it's upside down. So what is the reading behind this uh, hammer? <clears throat> now, every explanation I'm trying to give you here, it's, I'm trying to put it practically so that you understand very well. Now, before this candle opened and closed like this, Right, this was an indication that. Excuse me, um, my network is a little bit slow. Okay. Before this candle closed like this, remember I said this is a bullish candle, so which means that it opened here and then it closed above. Now this uh this particular bullish uh ha a hammer. It has barely no weeks above, okay? It had barely no weeks above. It might just be a slight week like this, but not that high, okay? It might just have a small week above it, but not that high, all right? If it is high like this, it's no more a hammer again, okay? At least you should know the shape of a hammer, right? Uh, so please, which candle is a pin bar? So <clears throat> this is a hammer. And then it's a bullish candle. This is another, but it's a bearish candle. So these are inverted. So how, where do we see this on the chart and how do we read it? Let me copy this to somewhere here so that I give a proper explanation here. This way. Oh, my God.
So now, this is a bullish candle here. Please follow up clearly. Bef this is the low of the candle, okay? This is the low of the candle. That's why we have the low of this candle. Now, before the low of this candle started, this candle was somewhere down here, okay? It actually opened here and then traded down to this point. When it traded down to this point, it was actually a red candle. It was actually a red candle. Please follow up clearly. When it opened here and traded down, it was a red candle, which means that sellers were in, okay? Which means that sellers were in this particular moment in the market. People were selling. Now, when it came down to this price point, buyers came in and they pushed back price up to this point and then they closed the market up. Now, you will notice that immediately price, it, it goes back up to pass the opening price. It will not turn bullish. Right, so we now closed at this point. Okay, but when it was down here, it was a bearish candle. So what does that imply? This means that sellers did not have power to continue pushing price down, and then buyers came in. So what this means is that this is actually a bullish signal. Okay, when you see this on the chart, it gives you um, it gives you that signal that you should be expecting. A bullish move okay that you should be expecting a bullish move which means that you might have something like this you might have had something like this and then uh okay and then we should expect something like this should expect something like this okay so this is your hammer this is your hammer here and then this is how it happens so when this candle this when it was at this point it was still a bearish candle remember that it was still a bearish candle just like these other ones but when buyers came in and rejected price before the close of the candle and it came back up to close at this point turning it now to be a bullish candle that's when we now that's when when it closed at this point that that's the time we call it a a hammer candle okay which means that sellers have been rejected sellers do not have power again to continue pushing price down and this is the likelihood that will happen next okay price will likely continue to go up so this is a hammer pattern here so when you see this on the chart you expect price to go the opposite direction okay you expect price to go to the opposite direction now again it is the same thing that will happen on this particular uh bearish one again okay this uh this one here this is the same thing that can happen here but this one is not a strong hammer because it's it closed bearish again okay if it could have closed bullish it would be a very strong uh bearish it would be a very strong hammer but when it, it has closed bearish this is it's kind of like it's not really that strong but it's still the same thing it still signifies how sellers were not able to push price down and then they had to push price right up to closing at this point Okay, and now when we go to inverted hammers and uh, inverted hammer, it's simply just the opposite of everything. Okay, it's just the opposite of everything that we have been explaining. So, when you're looking at these candlesticks, you're just trying to read a story that is telling you. Okay, you are trying to read the story behind the candles. What are the candles saying? Because they are giving you a story. They are like they are telling you what is happening in the market so you should be able to understand them when you see a candle forming okay so this one here is simply just the opposite of it i will not want us to waste so much time on it again so it's simply just the opposite this means that buyers have been rejected because when price was at this point it was a full bullish candle but it had to come back down to close at this point so which means uh buyers have been rejected which means that we we're first of all seeing something like this we're first seeing something like this and then when we had when we had this re rejection
So when we had that rejection here, we might now expect something to happen like this. Something like this to happen. Okay. So which means buyers have been rejected and then prices will continue going lower. Okay. There were no more people to buy again. So sellers came in at this high point and they started selling. They pushed back price down and closed at this level. So the likelihood for it is to continue lower and then again you you can still see this like this okay it could still it, if when it is a bearish candle it's a strong indication it's a strong signal okay like sellers came in and actually closed a candle bearish so it's a very big signal all right so we have explained two candlesticks types the hammer the hammer the inverted hammer okay and then we have talked about bullish engulfing and a bearish engulfing. Now we are going into the third one, which is one of the most important ones as well. Okay, there are so many types of candles. There are actually so many types of candles. But these are the most important ones. These are the most important candles. Now, let's go to a doji. How do we read a doji candle? What's this? What's the reading behind a doji candle? Okay, this is a doji. A doji is a candle that barely has a body. Okay, it's a candle that barely has a body. That means the body is really small. The body of the candle is really, really small, but it has long wicks. Okay, it has long wicks on both sides. Or you can call them shadows. We have it has long wicks on both sides. So this is called a doji. This is how a doji candle looks like. We have a bullish doji and we have a bearish doji. Now, what is the explanation behind this? This means uh indecision. Okay, there is indecision in the marketplace, which means that price can likely go up or go down. Now, at this point, it's like uh the buyers and sellers, they're in the market 50-50, okay? And uh, no one is overcoming each other. So it's a level of indecision and price might likely go up or go down, okay? So when you see this in the market, you have to wait and see which uh, party, okay, whether buyers or sellers are going to come into the market to push price to which direction. Okay, that's simply the explanation behind this particular candle, which is a doji. Okay, we still have we have candles like pin bars, we have candles like uh, bullish haramani, marabuzo, and so many of them. But these are the most important candlesticks that we are going to be using. Like when you see them on the chart, know that this is what might come next. This is the reading behind this particular candle. Okay. So let's go to the chat now and see if we we'll try to get question, um, some examples. If you have a question, you can ask on the chat box. Okay, Mr. Betkan is asking, say, please, which candle is a pin bar? Okay, which candle is a pin bar? A pin bar is like this. Okay. Pin bars like this. It has it's almost like a hammer, but it has a very small body. Okay. Unlike a hammer, a hammer has a good body, but a pin bar does not have a good body. Okay. A pin bar does not have a good body. It has a small body. If you have a question, please let me see that on the chart, please. So a pin bar is unlike uh it's the pin bar is just like slightly like a doji, but the body of the pin bar is slightly a little bit big, slightly a little bit big, bigger than a doji. Okay, it's slightly bigger than a doji, but the wicks are not so the wicks are not on both sides like that of a doji. But the body is not like that of a hammer. So they are they're kind of like Relate, relating but the main thing here is for you to understand the rejections here when you see this long week 
it shows that buyers came in and they push back price up. When you see this, it shows that the buyers came in, push back price up, and just like that. That's simply the explanations. How do they read the pin bar? So please, should we buy or sell with confidence when we see a doji? No, 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 no. You cannot buy. I say the doji is a, a level of indecision. Okay, you don't yet know if there are buyers that are coming in or sellers. What is the best time frame to pay attention to these candles? Okay. For if you want to be trading candles, you have to stay with higher time frames. Okay. You'll be sticking with higher time frames, like as from four hour upward. Because when you go down to lower time frames, you have so many, so many of these mixed candles up and down. That's like a like, lot of noise. So you have to be trading them mostly on higher time frames, as from the four hour upward. So, like I said, how to read a doji is a level, it's a period of indecision. You don't know whether price will go up or down yet. Like the buyers and sellers, they are 50 50. Okay. But remember, I said for the market to go up, demand must be higher than supply. And for the market to go down, supply must be bigger than demand. So, if you see this, it means that supply and demand, like they are equal. Okay. There's, there's no one that is higher than the other. So, you will have to wait. All right, to see if what is going to happen next, if supply is going to be greater than demand, okay, and then if demand is going to be greater than supply, which means that you can like if you see something like this happen next to this particular candle, if you see uh bullish candles like this coming after a doji, this actually means that okay, demand has taken control, so you'll be looking to to take buy opportunities. So let's go to the chart and try to check uh these candles now let's look at this one right here this is a a doji right this is a doji candle and now you notice that price was buying up and then a doji candle formed so when this doji candle formed what what do you do next like i said you can wait because price can still continue going up but now when you see this long bearish candle this shows that the supply has come back that the supply is more than the demand as at this point so you now expect to sell and what happened again here we also have this bearish engulfing this is another uh, this is another confluence that price really wants to continue lower so you keep selling you keep selling you keep selling and you keep selling okay so uh that's um this is a pin bar this is a pin bar here for the person that was asking, you can see the weeks. Like I said, the weeks are not as a doji. Okay, this is a, this is an inverted pin bar. Okay, let's check again. We'll see. <clears throat> now, this here, these are dojis. Like you see, as I said, when you see them, when you see these particular candles with the wicks on both sides like this, this actually means that buyers are pushing up prices, sellers are pushing it back. So you have to be patient and to see which side is going to take control okay now this again here this was a doji and what happened next this bearish candle formed you notice that sellers are present in the market so you continue selling and the market will continue going down here again we have another doji here and what happened next you see these candles bearish candles it signifies selling pressure Okay, thank you so much. So at what time intervals can we at what time intervals can we analyze these candles? I've said if you want to be analyzing candles, you should be looking at four hour daily time frame, weekly time frame, monthly time frame. You should be looking at higher time frames. Okay. Don't be looking at smaller time frames when you are analyzing candlesticks. Now, this let me just prove to you here now. Let's go to the one minute. You're just going to see so many types of candlesticks that are forming up and down, and you will not, it's just a lot of noise. Okay, there's a lot of noise that is happening. So many candlesticks, you will not know whether price wants to go up or go down. So, it's when you go to a higher time frame, like let's say you go to let's say you go to the monthly chart, let's go to the monthly chart, you see something very clear. You see candlesticks, they are not so crowded. Right, they are not so crowded. You see very clean engulfing candle here, and what happened? 
price sold for how many months? One, two, three, four, five, six. Price sold for six months. And when this doji formed, all right, when this doji formed and you see this bullish candle, this means that the buyers are coming in. So what happened? The price is bought for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten months. Okay. What happened again? We saw another doji. And then you see this bearish candle. You know that, okay, prices wants to go down. What happened again? We sold for series of moons. Okay. So when you see this on a higher time frame, it gives you a good, it gives you uh, a good signal that you can hold for some time. Please, how can you, how can determine the direction of the market of a great certainty? We are going to, closer to that this candlesticks we don't use candlesticks to determine uh price direction with uh, uh with the way you are expecting okay this is just a confluence we are getting deeper into technical analysis but this i'm just giving you clues on how to read the information the market is telling you on candlesticks not like when you look at a candlestick you should just start buying and so on but it gives you a signal all right so uh, the next question is, uh, I have a question concerning pips on the first class. If Euro USD has four digits, which are pips? What about USD GP? How do we, how do we calculate the pips? What if the inverted hammer forms at the resistance zone? Do we consider a? You are already talking about resistance. We are not yet talking about supply, um, support and resistance. Then you mentioned uh, USD GPY. Okay, for USD GPY pairs, they are not, they are not like Euro USD. Okay, they are not like uh, Euro USD pairs. If you look at, uh, let's let, let's check CAD GPY. Let's check CAD GPY and you see the quotes for CAD GPY. Oh, let's let's search for your pair as you said, uh, USD GPY. USD GPY. Okay. So this is USD GPY. Now you see the quotes here, they start right from how much do we have here? These are the quotes for the GPY. Okay, you start, you have three digits ahead and then you have two digits behind. But it's simply the same thing. It seems, it seems the same thing, guys. It's not It's not complicated. Okay, it's just like the same thing with, uh, let me see. It's just the same thing with Euro USD. Euro USD has a point, one, one digit ahead, and then it has uh, maybe 0 0.54, then this is how it looks like. But with USD GPY, it's already more than one ahead. So which means that you can have like three, one, three, four. And then now you have a point here and then you have zero. Let's say you have, um yeah, zero, two, three. At this point, okay, you neglect the last third digit. So you're focusing on this one. So which means that you have, this is the cent, which means this is, two pips and with this if this is two then you're going to be having 22 pips okay that's simply how to calculate that you always neglect the last digit okay you always keep the last digit if you have three of them but if they are just two in gpy pairs then that's enough that's that's okay but if you have three you neglect the last one Okay, let me give another example. We have, uh, let's say you have, um, let's say for card GPY, card GPY will have something like this, 108.14, something like this, GPY pairs, okay? Now with this, we have, this is actually 14 pips, okay? It's actually 14 pips. If it is seven, 17 pips. If we have zero here, then this is four pips. Okay, it is four pips. If you have seven here, it is 74 pips. If there is a digit here, you ignore it. Same as when you have a digit here, you ignore it as well. 
Okay, when well, that is for Euro USD, for pairs that have USD, or oh, they have uh, four digits after the, the decimal point, you always neglect the fifth one. Mm -hmm. I think that explains the question. Let's see if we have another question again. There are some green and red candles with both big equal body. How can we call it? Let me let me make something clear for you guys here. You're not going to be reading candlesticks as if uh, you're trying to cram so many things. Like for example, maybe this is the type of candle you're trying to explain here that like they have equal bodies. There are so many candles, okay? There are so many candles. It's not every candle that you just you must try to find out its meaning and so on. They, we have uh, a pregnant marabuzo, which, which is like this. You have a bearish candle and then you have one in between it. This is a, a, a bearish haramani. We have marabuzo candle. We have so many. We have tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms. Now, those if you have two bullish candles at the same time, they, there's one we call uh, the buy and sell power and so on. Okay, we have tweezer tops. If you have two bullish candles at the, at the swing high, it's called tweezer tops. If you have two candles, the same bodies at the bottom, you have tweezer bottoms. Okay, there are so many names to a lot of candlesticks, but remain with the selected ones that are given to you. If you need more, that's when you can now go and backtest. If you feel like you want more of the candlesticks, okay, you can go and backtest because every candle here has a name. Every candle here has a name, but I've selected the most important ones that it's going to help you. You will not be able to know all the types of candlesticks that you will see on your chart. All right. You are not going to see, you're going to, let me see. Is there another question again? Okay. No question. There are, is there a question that I've not gone through? direct message all right uh guys if there is no other question i think we have discussed a lot on the three types of kind six now tomorrow we are going to start the real deal Okay, we are going to start the real deal. What we call, we're going to start uh, how to trend in markets and so on. I have a bullish and a bearish market, uptrend and bearish trend and so on. Those are the things that we'll start to look tomorrow. Which, how to know if a market is going to be bullish or how to know if a market is going to be bearish. Now, but one thing that you need to know is that the market does not move in a straight line. The market does not move in a straight line. So tomorrow we are going to start